Welcome to PCR TV at the Euro PCR 2018 conference. My name is Radek Parma. I'm an international cardiologist from Medical University of Silesia in, in Poland. And I have the honor uh, to introduce you to Achim Büttner from Heart Centrum in Freiburg, Germany, uh, who is the expert in, in PCI of the chronic total occlusions. Today we are going to speak about the integrate PCI in the CTO no wall can stop us. And uh, Dr. Wittner, I would be very grateful for explaining to me uh, what patients could we qualify nowadays uh, for integrate PCOs in centers which would like to start their PCO uh, program with the integrate approach. Um, I think um CTOs shouldn't be treated differently to uh, non-occlusive lesions because um, I think we have the same indications that is angina or ischemia from the side of the patient. And uh, these interventions are technically more demanding, but in experienced hands uh, with the material and the technologies and uh, techniques we have nowadays, uh, the success rates are very high. And uh, I think uh, CTOs shouldn't be prohibitive for PCI, and these patients shouldn't uh, primarily sent to the, be sent to the surgeon. Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of uh, toolbox should the doctors prepare uh, in order to start the undergrade uh, CTO program in their cath lab? Uh, when, you, when you start your own program, uh, you have to know all the different techniques. You have to attend workshops, conferences, and look for cases in the internet. And you have to have uh, an appropriate toolbox uh, on the shelf. But nowadays we have uh, such a fantastic material, especially these recolorization wires uh, that provide uh, really high success rates. Uh, and you have to know that material and you have to have it in place. And uh, when you start a program, you should look for the appropriate patients uh, for your level of education, not start with the difficult CTOs, more with the easier ones. Mm -hmm. But we have also nice tools to to, uh, for the grading of the difficulty of CTOs, like the Japanese CTO score, the Chase CTO score, for instance. Mm -hmm. Are there any other qualification criteria which uh, you would suggest for uh, people starting integrate uh, CTO mm -hmm. to consider before approaching to, to, to such techniques? You should be an experienced uh, interventionist, uh, have a lot of experience uh, in treating non-occlusive lesions, uh, also mm -hmm. complex ones. And uh, then you should uh, just uh, develop your skills step by step and uh, learn the appropriate techniques really from the beginning. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, these wire escalation techniques from Antigrade. Start always with a, with a soft uh, polymeric uh, taper tip wire that doesn't do a lot of harm, to, even if it's treated a little bit uh, less professionally. And then uh, go on with the next steps. It's always good to have an experienced co colleague at your side and, uh, or even a proctor for more complex cases. But uh, it's important to learn these techniques step by step and not to find any shortcuts and start with the difficult cases just from the beginning. My fellows and colleagues usually ask uh, which approach would be the most optimal one, femoral or radial for the start. Could you comment on that? It's an intense discussion. It's, it's just access uh, sites, arterial access sites. Uh, I still prefer uh, the femoral access uh, for several reasons because uh, it's not a problem to have uh, bigger uh, guiding catheter diameters. You can also use seven French from radial, but uh, it, it's no problem from femoral to have bigger sizes. Um, you have a more, uh, more stable guiding catheter position, uh, especially for the left coronary system when you come femorally. If the intervention lasts for a longer time, for three hours or four hours, it's also better, better for the patient comfort. If he can move his arms, and sometimes patients also develop spasms and pain mm -hmm. if uh, these radial uh, guiding catheters are too long in the arm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of techniques uh, in intervention cardiology do you think are most important for a successful uh, integrate CTO? 
Uh, no, the, the most important task is to bring a wire through the CTO uh, into the true distal lumen of the vessel. Mm -hmm. And so the wire techniques are crucial and uh, they are combined with microcatheter techniques. But uh, you don't need so many different wires. You need uh, more or less three types of wires. Uh, the wire I mentioned before, start, my suggestion would be always start with a tapered tip, very soft polymeric wire and see if it finds a way through anatomic structures or microchannels and then follow with the microcatheter, secure the position, the wire position you have and then if the wire gets stuck, go to a medium stiff wire. There are also wires on the market that have unique characteristics, a very good steerability uh, and uh, so you can correct your wire position and steer it directly into the distal lumen that you always have to show with a controllateral injection that you, so, that you see where you go. And if these wires get stuck you have hard wires uh, mm -hmm. also um, to penetrate mm -hmm. fibrotic or calcified tissue. So you brought this issue of contralateral, contralateral injection which is very helpful in, in controlling the procedure. At the end of the procedure after the stenting, do you think there is any sense in control angiography which is scheduled up front? Uh, <laughs> In the beginning, uh, for me it's now nearly uh, 15 or 20 years ago, we, we controlled every CTO patient after half a year. But since we have drug eluting stents, uh, in those cases where I have a, a nice result, a, a good result, uh, we don't schedule the patients for control angiography because usually after half a year it looks the same as directly after the intervention. But if you have uh, diffuse dif distal disease or you're not so much satisfied uh, with the acute result or have uh, complex bifurcation situations or something like that involved, then it would make sense to have a control angel uh, after six months. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bütner, for all this information. And I hope uh, that it, is, it will be very helpful for our fellows. Thank you.